Algebra 2, Concept 34, Angles and Radian Measure. So get down some vocabulary definitions and formulas. Um, you can see that you have some fill in the blanks, so you're going to fill in where you see the red words. An angle can be formed by fixing one ray, call its initial side, and rotating the other ray, called its terminal side, about the origin. An angle is in standard position when its vertex is at the origin and its initial side lies on the positive x-axis. So in trigonometry, we're going to think of angles a little differently. Rather than two rays just coming together and existing as an angle, we think of an x-y axis. And then on the positive x part, we have one ray that imprints itself, and then it starts rotating. It stops at a certain point, and then imprints itself where it stops. And so now we're going to think of angles as a rotated ray. Also in trigonometry, we can measure angles in degrees, as we've done before. I'm also going to show you how to... Um, measure angles in radian or how to convert from degrees to radian measure. The last thing is that we have something called coterminal angles in trigonometry. A coterminal angle is an angle that begins and ends in the same position as a given angle. So angles in standard position, again, we're going to talk about angles as if they were a rotated ray. So standard position is that their initial side is on the positive x-axis, and then it's going to rotate. So an angle is in standard position when its vertex is at the origin, its initial side lies on the positive x-axis. If that angle is rotating counterclockwise, then we say that it's positive. If the angle is rotating clockwise, then that angle measure we say is negative. So we can have negative angle measures now. And an angle can rotate more than 360 degrees. So an example of that would be an angle here that's its initial side. It's on the positive x-axis. It's going to rotate, and then I'm going to stop it in what I call the third quadrant. So one two, three, four. And let's say that that's about 230 degrees, and it's going to be positive because it rotated counterclockwise. Now I'm going to draw another angle in green, and so it's going to start in the same place, but it's going to rotate this way, and it's going to stop just here. So let's say that that's about 80, negative 80 degrees. It's negative because it is rotating clockwise, but it is in standard position because all of the other criteria fit. So now let's draw some angles in standard position together. So you're going to sketch yourself an x-y axis, and then you're going to put the initial side right on the positive x-axis. Now let's talk about this x-y axis in terms of angles. So if we rotate straight up and stop, then that angle would be 90 degrees. If we keep rotating then and stop at the next axis, it would be 180 and then 270 and 360. If we have an angle that is just right on top of itself, we can have a zero degree angle. So 240 degrees would rotate 90, 180, and stop somewhere here in the third quadrant. So we start numbering 1, and then we go around to the left, 3, and then 4. So 500 degrees, we would start initial position. We would, we would rotate 90, 180, 270, 360, 360, and 90 more would put us at 450. And so we would stop somewhere in the third quadrant. And you would go ahead and give that little rotation um, spiral that you see. So we know that that angle is rotating um, more than once around. So it is a 500 degree angle. It's rotating counterclockwise and um, that makes it positive. All right, standard degree. So we start the initial side in the positive x-axis and then we're going to rotate this way. And so stop about at 50 degrees 
Um, so that would be an angle that is negative 50. Before we do some examples on coterminal angles, go back up to your definition section and let's add something to our coterminal angle. Coterminal angles begin and end in the same place. And now that we know that angles can rotate more than 360 degrees, we know that coterminal angles are going to be within 360 degrees of each other. They can rotate, or sorry, um, be positive or negative. So to find a coterminal angle, um, you can do two things to the angle measure. You can add 360 degrees, or you can subtract 360 degrees. Essentially what you're doing is like a full rotation either in the positive or the negative direction. Now let's go work some coterminal angle examples. So example two says find a positive angle, um, but an angle that is also less than 360 degrees that is coterminal with and then 395 degrees. So I know that I could either add or subtract 360 degrees. That's one rotation in the positive or negative direction. But since I want an angle that is less than 360 degrees, then I'm going to subtract 360. And so I, essentially I'm like taking away a rotation. And so an angle that is coterminal with 395, that is less than 360, is 35 degrees. Let me show you just a brief sketch of this. So 35 degrees, let's say, is about here. And I'll just show that angle rotation in red. And then 395 is going to rotate around a full time and come back. So essentially, I have a picture of two angles there, one that is just rotating 35 degrees and one that is rotating 395 degrees. Now with my next one, I need a positive coterminal angle, so I need to add 360 degrees. If I were to subtract, I would end up with negative. And so if I add that, that will give me 315 degrees. So that fits the criteria of our directions. It is positive and it is left, sorry, excuse me, than 360. Here's a picture of what we've just done. Our negative 45 degree angle would be here, rotating negatively. Our positive 350 degree angle would rotate this way, but it fits the definition of coterminal and that it begins and ends in the same place. Now go back to that vocab and definitions and let's add one more thing, the final thing that we need to in that section. So now we're gonna talk about radian measure. This is just another way that we can measure angle. <clears throat> so consider a circle with a radius r centered at the origin. And it says as shown, you can see it on your um, note sheet. One radian is the measure of an angle in standard position whose terminal side creates an arc length r. So the arc length and the radius are the same. Because the circumference of a circle is two pi, there are two pi radians in a full circle. So degree measure and radian measures, excuse me, are related by the equation that one full rotation, 360 degrees, is what we call two pi radian. Or if we were to divide by two, 180 degrees is pi radian. So now <clears throat> put these little conversion factors up in that vocabulary definition sec section. If you're converting angle degrees to radian, you need to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. That introduces radian and divides out the degrees. If you want to convert from radian to degree, then you're going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. That introduces degrees and then divides out your radian measure. All right, so let's convert these. So we have to look at what we've got. A, we're starting with 135 degrees. That means we're going to convert to radian. So we're going to multiply by the conversion factor that introduces radian and divides out pi. Now, the, the rule, kind of the pirate guideline of when you are converting um, 
angles is that we don't estimate unless we initially start with the decimal portion. So what we'll have is 135 pi over 180. What's interesting is that units will divide out just like numbers. So our degrees are dividing out. So we're just left with numbers and radian measure is in, turn of, in terms of numbers. We wanna reduce this, but we wanna keep it in fraction form. So we don't wanna get it as a decimal, we want exact. So I'm just gonna think of 135 over 180 um, as a fraction and reduce that. So that would be 3 fourths and then pi. So 135 degrees in radian measure is 3 pi over 4. We can even convert negative angles. So notice that you have degrees, so that means we're going to convert to radian. So I'm going to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. Now our degrees are going to divide out and then we'll have negative 40 pi over 180 and then I'm just going to reduce that fraction. So that would be negative 2 pi over 9. Now I've got an angle measure that's radian. I can tell because there's no degree and then also it is in terms of pi. It won't always be, but one thing is you will not see a degree um, unit on there. So that means we're working in pi. So we want to multiply now by 180 degrees over pi. So that gets our degree measure up. Our pi's are going to divide out. 5 times 180 is 900. So now I've got 900 degrees over 4. And that is 225 degrees. Lastly, notice that I start with a decimal. So that means I can round and I will end up with the decimal. This is radian because I don't have a degree units on there. So that means I need to convert it to degree. So I'm going to use my conversion factor that will do that for me. So I'll end up with a negative. I'll take 728 times 180 and then I'll divide that by pi. And so this angle measure, and I'm just going to check that one more time, <laughs> is 417.11 degrees. Now let's talk about the degree and radian measures of special angles. So these angles are featured on your circle graphic. The diagram it shows equivalent degree and radian measure for special angles from 0 to 360. So notice that 0 of 360 is 2 pi, 45 degrees is 1 pi over 4, 90 degrees is pi over 2, 135 degrees is 3 pi over 4, 180 degrees is pi, 225 is 5 pi over 4, 270 is 3 pi over 2, and 315 degrees is 7 pi over 4 radian. You may find it helpful to memorize the equivalent degree and radi radian measures of very special angles. So not all of these on the circle, but 0 and 360, oh I'm sorry, 0 is 0 degrees or 0 radian, but 360 is 2 pi. That one is used a lot. Also 90 and pi over 2 along with 180 and pi are also used very frequently. And then it's just easy to go ahead and memorize that 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2. Think of it in terms of halves with your radian measure. So here we're rotating half of pi and then a full pi and then one and a half or three pi's over two and then two pi's there. Now here in this graphic I've got a formula that you can use to find the arc length of a circle, and that's featured on this graphic. So S is the arc length here. If you know um, R, the length of the radius, and then the angle in radians, then you can figure that arc length, S, by just taking the radian measure, theta times the radius. 
So let's do some more conversions. So 210, if you look at that graphic, that's not one of your common angles. We see it's degrees, so that means we want to convert it to radian. So we'll take it times our conversion factor. And then reduce the 210 over 180 and include it with the pi. So that would be 7 pi over 6. Now, if you look on that little graphic, 45 degrees is pi over 4. So this would be the same as negative pi over 4 radian. 3 pi over 2, if you look on your graphic there, that circle, we know that that is 270 degrees. And then finally, 3 fourths pi. If we take that times 180 degrees over pi, our pi's divide out, and then we multiply across, and we get 540 divided by 4, which is negative 135 degrees. So example 4, we have a softball field, and it forms a sector um, with the dimensions shown. So we're going to find the length of the outfield fence, so that right here ends up being our, an arc length. Um, it's a portion of the arc of a complete circle. Express your answer in terms of pi, and then we're going to round to two decimal places. So we can look at our graphic and see what the radius is. So it's 200 feet. And then the angle is a right angle. We can uh, see that. Okay. And that means uh, we need the equivalent radian measure, which is, you can look at your graphic on your note sheet, pi over 2. So that will be um, 100 pi, and we're in feet, and that's an exact, so I don't really need my approximate there. But now, to approximate that, so I take 100 times pi, so about 314 feet. Now you need to complete the independent practice problems on your own. Once you have completed those, then sign up and go to the teacher talk to review your work and your answers and just to talk over any questions that you have.